Violin. Gabriella. Djembe. So the first instrument that I ever learned to play was the violin, and I was seven years old. I learned piano. I learned flute. I hated both of them. I did violin, then I went to saxophone, then I jumped to piano, and then I went to guitar. So I kind of jumped from wood to bass to like brass, and then keyboard, and then strings. <laughs> When I learned drums, I got bored. Really? Well, because they were just teaching me this mama dada, mama dada, mama dada thing, and I'm like, no, I want, I want to know how Stuart Copeland is, is drumming in um, Zen Jada Mondada. And then techno came along, and it's like I was just interested in electronic drum sounds. I was about eight, and I wore a huge blue under my shirt, big long wig, and I sung Summertime in front of like 300 people calling it community centre. I was 11 years old and I was at the Multicultural Festival at Zillamia. Can I top that? Go on. I was an Elvis Presley impersonator at the age of seven. So it was in a nightclub. Um, yeah, in Melbourne. At a, at a, a club a, a, a club called Mechanoid, which was this sort of really sort of, you know, dark electro. And so my music kind of fit well into that. And it was a really good community. It was actually one of the first musical communities I kind of felt like I connected with, actually. I think everyone should be naked and bald. Or maybe like cover up their bits. But everyone should just get on a human level. Because mm. this, none of this mm. is real. Mm. None of this is real. Mm. I think that there's a lot of like restrictions when it comes to music, like there's stuff where people don't want you to talk about and if you talk about this then you totally get like blocked off and people don't even want to know you. No one can make you feel any particular way and there's nobody at this conference that is deserving of making you feel like, small or large, so that's the only way to go about it really. Because I'm like I want to portray myself as a role model for like Indigenous women and Indigenous as a community as a whole. Um, there's some topics that are really sensitive that I would like to talk about, but um, I guess the way that I approach things is a bit straightforward. Mm -hmm. So I've kind of learned to think things along before I go through with it. So what I'm excited about is that there's a wave of artists, not only in Melbourne but also internationally, who are just like. You know, like we're just we're coming, we're, we're performing as trans, or we're performing as you know non-binary and, and gender non-conforming, and um, you know it is whatever it is. You know, we're, we're here for entertainment, but we're not here to entertain you in those ways that you have expected us to be. We're not here to make you laugh. We're not here to you know put on a you know. A, a life with floor show, you know. If I just want to get up and play my drums in the, in the clothes that I'm wearing when I get out of bed and slap on some, some lipstick or not, then, you know. I think when you're at those stages, when you're like trying to figure out who you are, what you are, like walking around, you feeling really comfortable, you, have, um, you will never know, but you'll only know like after when you look back. But people fall in love with unique characters and that's what the music industry wants, you know, so like, as much as you can embrace that and stay level-headed. I guess, like, being a woman, you know, you, you have so much rights and, you know, just being, to value yourself as a female and, and to value yourself just as a person in general and to have respect for yourself and always remember where you come from. You have a right to be upset. You have a right to be angry. There's these conversations that are happening by cis, white, heteronormative people that are about us, and it's annoying us, it's annoying us. You've got a right to be upset about that. Stay grounded to your roots and, and um, be true to yourself and have no shame. And you just keep persisting and you just keep keep performing and um, like self-belief is a really important thing and I mean self-belief is kind of what's got me through everything. You know.